Hello all and welcome back to The Midnight Gang by David Walliams and we're on to chapter 12 and in today's chapter we are going to find out more about The Midnight Gang. So here we go. Chapter 12, follow the leader. As Amber's arms and legs were in plaster, she was pretty helpless. If she'd fallen out of her wheelchair, the girl would have struggled to get up. Most likely she would lie on her back with her arms and legs in the air like an upside down beetle. However, by sheer force of will, Amber was very much the leader of the Midnight Gang. Down in the hospital basement, she barked orders to George, Robin and the newest member of the gang, Tom. Straight ahead, turn right, right again, left again at the end of the corridor. George had been made to take over pushing Amber's wheelchair after Robin had bashed the girl into too many walls. There were suspicions that Robin had done it on purpose to get out of pushing. Now poor George was covered in sweat and panting like a dog. Pushing the wheelchair was hard work because it had a flat tyre. Do you want to go, Tom? spluttered George as he tried to push the old rusty contraption in a straight line. No, thank you. It's really fun pushing the wheelchair, ain't it, Robin? said George. Oh yes, George, an absolute treat, said Robin, not entirely convincingly. Look, Tom, began George, if you are serious about joining our gang and want this trial period to be a success, then you really need to push Amber's wheelchair, at least for a bit. Tom sighed. The boy knew he was being tricked into doing it, but he could do nothing about it. All right, all right, I'll do it. Yes, exclaimed George, punching the air in celebration. You boys should be fighting for the honour of pushing your leader around, remarked Amber. Who said you were the leader? asked Robin. I did, replied Amber. Now come on, Tom, let's get going. Reluctantly, the boy took the handles and began pushing the wheelchair. Amber was heavier than he thought, and it was a struggle to get going. Faster, faster, she ordered. Where are we going? asked Tom. Tom, as I said a few moments ago, you are on trial period in this gang, said Amber. Our destination on a, is on a strict need to know basis and you do not need to know right turn dutifully tom pushed the wheelchair right and then wheeled amber to what was in fact a dead end stop said amber you've taken me the wrong way i did exactly as i was told miss replied tom i mean amber no miss is fine said the girl i need to take a break for a moment announced tom as he sat on the floor the other two boys did the same before we go any further, I need, to, I need you to explain something to me. What? demanded Amber. The girl was not best pleased. It was clear she was going to be put, if, if she was going to be pushed another millimetre, she had to give the boys some proper answers. I still don't understand why this child started the secret gang in the first place all those years ago. You don't normally get to know all the secrets of the Midnight Gang until you are a full member, replied the girl. Please tell him, Amber, moaned George. I can't push any more. I got a stitch. The girl harumphed at the pathetic boys. Legend has it that this one particular child was stuck in Lord Funt Hospital for years and years, began Amber. Why? asked Tom. I suppose they had something very seriously wrong, replied Amber. Something more serious than a stitch. She shot a look over to George before continuing. This child was bored. Being ill is boring. Being in hospital is boring. They longed for excitement. So one night at midnight, so the story goes, they had this brilliant idea to create a secret gang for them, for them and all the other children on the ward. But what did this secret gang do? asked Tom. I'm coming to that, replied Amber. If you would please just let me get a word in edgeways. In the darkness of the basement, Tom could just make out George rolling his eyes at him. Amber was certainly a strong character. No doubt she had put Robin and George in their place many times since they had been admitted to hospital. This one patient thought, why should all the children on the outside have all the fun when they, are the, and, they and the other kids couldn't even leave the hospital? Why don't all the kids on the children's ward work together to make one of their dreams come true, starting every night at midnight? Why midnight? Because the grown-ups would not approve. This child knew that they would, have to, they would do everything in their power to stop the gang if they found out about it. 
so it had to swing into action only after the grown-ups had all gone to bed. Then, over time, as children left the ward, when they recovered from their injuries and illnesses, new children would come. And if the Midnight Gang members thought a new patient could be trusted, really trusted, if they were 100% sure they wouldn't tell the doctors or nurses or their parents or teachers or even their friends outside the hospital, then, and only then, would they be invited to join. Do you think you would have invited me to join? asked Tom. Probably not, replied Amber curtly. Why not, demanded the boy, more than a little hurt. To be honest, you seem a bit of a weed. A weed? Yes, a weed. Gosh, all that fuss just because you were hit on the head by a tennis ball. It was a cricket ball, protested Tom. Same thing, remarked George. No, it's not, exclaimed Tom. A cricket ball is much, much heavier. Yes, yes, of course it is, replied Amber sarcastically. I imagine they are so heavy a wimp like you would struggle to pick one up. The other two boys chuckled as Tom sulked. He knew he was not an Olympic athlete in the making, but he never realised people might think he was a wimp. Come on, Tom, don't sulk, said Amber. I suppose the Midnight Gang is nothing more than an idea, really, mused Robin, one that's passed from on from child to child. Like knits, asked George unhelpfully. Yes, exactly like knits, George, exclaimed Robin. You are, really are a genius. The Midnight Gang is exactly like knits, but without the scratchy heads, special shampoo, egg-removing combs, and, of course, the knits themselves. All right, all right, replied George. We can't all be the Brian of Britain, I mean, brain of Britain. If the Midnight Gang isn't passed on, then one day it will die out, continued Amber. We must all remember, even the leader herself, that this is not something that can be done all on your own. Especially if you need someone to push you around in a wheelchair, remarked Robin. The Midnight Gang can only succeed if all the members work together, said Amber. But to do what? asked Tom. This is the best bit, whispered Amber. To bring one of the children's dream dreams to life. And we'll find out what that is tomorrow in chapter 13.